Hello, and welcome to another episode of The Three Techs. I'm here with Bob Fairbairn. Hey, Bob. Good evening, Tony. How's it going? Not too bad, not too bad. Uh, it's another another Sunday evening uh, sitting at the computer recording podcasts. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, I figured maybe we could take a little time and talk about something that I think that nobody knows to ask this question, but I think it's a really important question to ask. If you're concerned about your data or your photos, you should be asking the question, am I backing those up? Am I protecting those precious oh, yeah. memories? Yeah. And I feel like a lot of people don't back up because they don't know how to properly back up. And sometimes people confuse backup with sync, synchronization, right, to the oh, cloud. Oh, sure, yes, Synchronizing absolutely. my photos between different devices. Right, right. And so I'd like to take this opportunity on this episode to talk about the difference between true backup and just synchronization of data. So, and why it's important. Now, okay. sync is great. I mean, I love having my photos in sync on all my devices and being able to access them no matter if I'm on my iPhone, my iPad, my Mac, anywhere. Yeah. But that is not true backup. I mean, yes, if I lose one of those devices, I could always resync it to the cloud um, and get my photos synced back to that phone. But there are some cases where I could actually lose photos so i don't know bob does that make sense oh yeah a absolutely and and i bet there's a lot of confusion uh about this uh I've, I've run into it with you know friends and family and 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 some of my clients that they don't understand the difference and and they don't they don't think about it uh as uh, we do in in information security information technology they don't think about it from that i love icloud photo library i love the way it synchronizes but guess what I back that all up separately because that's not a backup. Now let's try to give an example of why that's not a backup, a true backup. And what are the cases, the specific scenarios where you could actually lose data or lose a photo if you're only syncing it? Well, it's, it's pretty simple. You, you delete a photo and don't realize that you deleted it. Now, Apple does a pretty good job of going, I'm going to keep this for 30 days and then it's going to go away. And so let's say you delete a whole folder and you, or, or a whole uh, you know, set of photos and you don't recognize you deleted it. They're just gone. They're no longer available anywhere. They're deleted off of your phone. If you're synchronized to your iPad or your Mac, they're deleted off of there and they're deleted off of Apple servers because uh, you, said, you said delete it. And once that time period elapses, as long as you're using iCloud photo libraries in this example, that data is gone. It's just poof, gone. It's an important point. If you accidentally delete it and you don't realize that you deleted that photo, and that 30-day grace period has passed, yes, at that point, then it becomes permanently deleted. Yep. And that delete is conveniently, in quotes, synchronized across all of your devices. <laughs> so the photos deleted from all of your devices at the same time, which is yep. why synchronization is not good enough for total backup protection of your photos. Right. And I think that it's an important distinction to make uh, to understand the difference between sync and backup. So now we talked about why synchronization is not always going to protect you in the case where you accidentally delete a photo and you forgot that you deleted it and then it's right. automatically deleted off of every device you have. Right. Well, <clears throat> so let's talk about what backup is, what true backup is, and talk about how it would protect you in those cases. So, Bob, you want to take a shot at this? Yeah, let's <clears throat> let's let's talk about well, let's talk about one of them. Let's talk about a local backup process that I use. So, one of the things you can do is I have an iPhone and a Mac and an iPad as an example, and I take a picture with my iPhone, and that picture gets synchronized up to the cloud, and then that picture also would get synchronized on my Mac. So, specifically on the Mac, there's a setting. And that setting says keep all the originals on the Mac also. So what happens is the original photo gets taken on your iPhone, it gets synchronized up to iCloud, okay, photo library, and synchronized down to my Mac, back down to my Mac. And now that, that full resolution image that my, uh, my iPhone took is stored on my Mac. 
Now I want to back that up. I want to make sure that that's safe. And so uh, Apple provides a tool. It's one of a couple of tools I use, but Apple provides a tool called Time Machine. And what Time Machine does is it backs up all all, all of the data on your Mac and it does incremental backups every hour and it constantly keeps everything backed up. So if that photo gets deleted, it is still stored on my backup. That adds that really nice bit of extra safety margin that I could go back to my backup and pull that photo back off again. Yeah, I think that's a good uh, description of how most backup systems work. I think it's important to also make a distinction between backup systems that keep multiple revisions or copies of a file, right, right, as it gets modified and changed. And there's actually certain rules and options that you can set up in your backup software so that if you delete a file, it will actually keep it and keep it, you know, indefinitely since the original backup that you created, or it'll keep it for some defined period of, of time. Now, right. you could run into the same situation there if you accidentally delete a file. And let's say you didn't realize you deleted it for a year. and you, But you had a rule set up that said, well, delete, purge any old files that were deleted more than a year ago through your backup right. software. Because your right. backup software can be programmed to do that. In that case, you kind of get the same situation that we talked about earlier with, you know, the photo sync automatically right. deleting after 30 days. So um, it's important to understand how your backup software works, how many versions and revisions of a file that it keeps and for how long. Right. And the version thing is, is you don't see it as much with the uh, iCloud photo library because you're not actually modifying the picture, you're modifying metadata in a, in a database. But let's say you have a word processing document and you, you write that today and then two weeks from now you edit it and then two weeks after that you edit it again. Well, now you have three versions and your backup software may limit the number of versions that it keeps. And so you have to look at the backup software you're purchasing or the system you're purchasing to make sure that uh, you know how many versions it keeps. Now that we've sort of described what a true backup is, right? Something that will keep your files indefinitely, even if you delete them. Right. You know, assuming you did it accidentally. Uh, I think that's really good to have. What can people do about it? I mean, if I have, I'm, I'm thinking that most people take pictures on a smartphone these days. Right. They have it stored there. They probably don't connect it regularly to a computer to synchronize it and back those photos up. Um, mm -hmm. I think most people just maybe charge it every night and that's about it. They might have it synced to various cloud services, but what can people do to, to protect themselves? Well, there's a couple of different ecosystems out there and we could talk about the Apple ecosystem maybe a little bit and maybe a little bit about Google's ecosystem. We kind of in passing mentioned a, a thing called iCloud Photo Library. Apple has a service called iCloud and a part of that service is iCloud Photo Library. And if that's turned on on your phone and you have to turn it on, you take the picture and then it says, oh, I'm using iCloud Photo Library. So I'm going to take that picture like we talked about before and I'm going to stick it and I'm going to store it up in Apple's cloud. Okay, so now that picture is stored up on Apple's cloud. So you have a copy of that photograph on your iPhone and you have a copy of that photograph up in, in iCloud Photo Library. So now there's a there's a place you can recover it from. But again, it's, it's still subject to that synchronization problem where if it gets deleted off of your iPhone, it will eventually get deleted uh, off of iCloud Photo Library. So that's one way of doing that. Google Photos has a similar thing um, and you can use that on, on a lot of other devices devices. Google Photos has a little bit of a twist you have to be careful about. When you set up Google Photos to do your synchronization, there's two settings in what it stores. It says either store a full res, uh, full resolution image, or store, um, a, I'll call it a compressed image. And it's it, you could store an unlimited number of compressed images, and it doesn't count against your storage space. But if you store a full resolution image, it does count against your storage space. And I think a typical Google account is like 15 gigabytes of storage or something. It's not a lot, and then you have to pay them more money. So I use Google Photo Library, uh, uh, Google Photos as, as kind of a backup for some of my data every now and then. Uh, but I keep all of my photos in 
uh, iCloud Photo Library, and like we talked about a little bit before, back it up with the Time Machine and uh, an off-site backup. Yeah, I think that anything better than no backup or no synchronization is to at least take that yes. first step and sign up for one of those services like iCloud Photo Library or oh. with the Google Photos because at least you have some protection if you totally lose your device or it gets destroyed. Uh, yes. You have some way of retrieving those photos back. You know, mm-hmm. it's that is better than no protection or synchronization at all. It doesn't yeah. protect you, like we said, from accidentally deleting photos. Uh, but again, right. that's that's better than nothing. Now, moving over to that kind of true holistic backup approach, which you described earlier, Bob, right. which is right. you download the original photographs to your Mac so Correct. that you can then use your Mac as sort of a hub to back up all of these photos to a local time machine backup, as well as remotely to any cloud services, right? Right. Okay, so step one, at least synchronize your photos because that's better than nothing. Mm -hmm. Backing up does take a little bit more effort. So let's talk about the different types of backup, local versus offsite, and why you want to do both. Okay. I mean, okay. why why would you need to do both? I mean, can I just have a local, you know, USB drive that I plug into my Mac and back mm-hmm. everything up there? Okay. Well, I'll give you a couple of examples why. Um, I'm sitting here in my basement in DuPage County, Illinois, and right behind me is a sump pump. And my computer and my backup drive are sitting right here on the floor. If the sump pump fails or we get uh, some sort of nasty weather bad and the basement fills up with water, the computer and the backup drive are kind of wet. And they're probably not ever going to work ever, ever again. So getting I've got a solution for that, Bob. Just put it up on a shelf and you'll be good. (laughs) Well, it's three feet off the ground, so it's probably okay. I don't think I've ever gotten more. I don't think I've ever gotten three feet of water in my basement that I know of. At least if if I did, somebody hit it from me really well. Right. But it's uh, fire, flood. Uh, theft. Um, someone steals your steals your, the stuff out of your home. Your pictures are just gone. Okay, and that can be heartbreaking. It, it definitely is heartbreaking. That's a great reason why you would not only want to have local backup, but you'd also want to have remote, you know, cloud based backup. Maybe yes, right? yes, and and to a certain extent. Um, you're somewhat protected with the file synchronization tools, right? So it's the, the photos are synchronized to iCloud photo library. As long as you're doing that, right, then then some of that catastrophic protection is there, but it doesn't protect you from accidental deletion or or deletion that you didn't know about, whether somebody maliciously deleted it or whether it got deleted due to a software error or something like that. So that's where these backup systems come in. Then we get into offsite backup. Cloud-based offsite backup is a really, really marvelous, marvelous way of doing this stuff but it requires a good internet connection and that's another you know it adds another cost to your to your system i've you got a it. interesting story where i tried one of those cloud backup systems and i suppose i'm not your average uh <laughs> user because i work with a lot of video i sh- have a lot of photos but mainly it's the videos that take up a lot of space and oh, they're huge i remember having my mac and i was like okay, I'm going to back all this up to the cloud because I need some sort of off-site remote backup for all my mm-hmm. video stuff. Mm-hmm. And I installed the software. It was an unlimited you know, storage. So I was like, great, this will work. I click start. And I think it said something like seven years left to back up. <laughs> <laughs> I was probably going to get a new computer before the backup would finish of all the data that I had on my computer. Um, Times have changed, though. Uh, This was maybe, well, it was not too long ago that my internet connection was not as fast. But these days I have, fortunately, uh, fiber optic gigabit speed internet. So it's one gigabit Mm -hmm. download, one gigabit upload, which is actually the more important part for me, being able to upload data very quickly. Mm -hmm. So now I have close to 100 terabytes of data backed up off-site and it's pretty amazing it uh it didn't take 17 years to back this up it hasn't been 17 years in the making it only took like i don't know two or three months to back Uh up all that data which is pretty amazing in the times that we live in now yeah that's that is pretty amazing yeah when i first 
turned on that backup service and I had that gigabit internet, I was backing up maybe a terabyte or more per day. Uh -huh. So it was pretty impressive and satisfying to see that data being moved so quickly. So <laughs> There's one thing you mentioned, though, and both of us have this problem we have to be careful about. As you're doing all these backups, uh, companies like Comcast, uh, as an example, um, they have limits on the amount of data you transfer. And so you have to be careful because you can go over your limit and get charged for extra data charges. So you have to kind of watch that. There's some ways that you could purchase extra bandwidth from them. You have to keep an eye on that if you have a lot of data to back up. Um, that is a very good point because uh, some of these internet service providers have started to limit and meter the amount of mm -hmm. data that you transfer per month. Right. I believe uh, some companies limit it to about one terabyte per month. Now, granted, I was pushing one terabyte per day, so <laughs> yeah. I would have gone over that very quickly and would have paid a lot of fees for the amount of data that I was transferring. So fortunately, mm -hmm. the service that I have doesn't charge by the gigabyte or terabyte. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, let's, that's a good point, though. So, you know, what could people do if online backup is not feasible for them, either because their connection just isn't fast enough to back up all the data or they would be charged back up all I have a solution data. for you. Yeah? Yeah, What's I have that? a solution for you. Um, yeah, I'll, put, I'll hold it up here. That is a two and a half inch drive. It's a little, you know, a little, you know, buy them at the store. This one happens to be made by a company called Western Digital. You hook this up to your Mac or your or your PC and you back up your data to this, okay? And they come in different sizes. And then what you do is you take this to grandma's house. Mm. Okay. And now it's at grandma's house, and you gotta remember to take it to grandma's house. Now that's pretty good. Grandma's house is pretty good as long as grandma's not too close. So in my case, grandma's next door. That's too close. Mm -hmm. Tornado hits, floods hit, stuff like that. So the reason I picked two and a half inch drive is it fits in a standard safe deposit box. So you back up your precious photographs, copy it off onto this thing, either use a time machine backup or however you want to copy it on here, a manual backup, and you take this and you go to the safe deposit box and you go there two or three times a year and you, t you have two of these, right? You have one in the box and one to go to the box and you just rotate them through. Sometimes we use three, father, grandfather, son, sort of a, a, of a, a T, very heavy, but just having, have an extra one of these that you take and you back up every now and then. I think it's a, I think it's a really fine way to protect yourself that one, that one step further. I think so too. That's a really good point. And safe deposit boxes aren't really that expensive. I think you no. can get them for, depending on the size of the box, for less than $100, maybe close to $50 a year. And, and depending upon the bank, so for instance, the bank I've been dealing with for a long time, we have enough money in the bank that they actually give us a safe deposit box for free. So go check with your bank and see. You might It might not cost you anything other than the price of a drive. And um, that reminds me. I need to go update the drive in the safe deposit box. Oh, maybe I do that's too. Why the, maybe that's why this one's here. Okay, Tony, I want to see you get 70 terabytes in one of these little drives. <laughs> I'm going to need a bigger box. You're going to need a bigger box. Yes. Uh, I, I do know that somebody from experience told me that the safe deposit vault that their bank had, unfortunately, mm -hmm. got flooded. I don't know really? if it was from an actual flood from water outside coming in or if it was water damage from like plumbing that broke or the fire suppression system that, you know, the sprinklers going off. Um, so that's an important thing to just think about. It might just be a good tip to maybe put your drive inside a Ziploc bag or yep. maybe two of them, you know, double okay. bag it uh, to protect it in case it is submerged in water. Right. You won't that drive won't go bad. So there's a there's a principle that a lot of photographers use, a lot of people, it's called a 3-2-1 backup scheme. Okay, so you always have three copies of your data, uh, a working copy, a local backup copy, and an off-site backup copy. And uh, being just a little bit paranoid, I guess, um, I have a 5 Five, four, yeah, a, f a five, uh, a five copy strategy. So, I, I guess I'm just paranoid. 
I, I guess you can't really be too paranoid when it comes to backing up your data because if you really value it, then you want to be able to recover it if you right, do lose it. Right. I mean, yeah. it's, you know, drives can go bad too, right? Just because oh, yeah. you back something up and you keep it there for five years, who knows if that drive is going to work when you plug it back in five years later. So it's important with data. I feel like it's this constant maintenance and you've got to kind of maintain it and keep updating and moving it from one drive to another to ensure that it's still viable. Right. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I guess the thing you could do one thing to protect yourself, you've got an iPhone and you're taking pictures with your iPhone is turn on iCloud photo library to make sure that that's backed up. And then when your phone gets stepped on, gets lost, gets stolen, gets replaced, you've got not only your pictures, your addresses, all of that data that uh, iCloud backs up for you. I really think that's a wonderful investment in comfort. I think that's a really good point. I mean, you know, we were trying to explain why synchronization is not real backup on this show, but I tried to make a point that if you're not synchronizing at all, that's even worse than right. not backing up. So yeah. I think that if you walk away from anything from this show, do some sort of synchronization, right? It's not right. that expensive to protect your memories that mm -hmm. you will lose forever if you lose your phone, right? If you don't have a backup of it, if it's not somewhere else in the cloud uh, protected. So yeah, do yourself a favor sign up for some sort of synchronization service, whether it be iCloud photo library or the Google equivalent. And if you've got time and the resources, look into some of the backup techniques and options that we talked about today, like using a local hard drive to backup or signing up for one of those online backup services to backup over the internet. Right. Yeah. And there's a lot of resources out there to help you uh, whether it's a local, you know, Apple user group or something like that, or the local Apple store or the Microsoft store. There's a lot of resources uh, uh, that uh, people can help you find a drive, get it hooked up, get it, get the backup, get it getting going for a minimal investment. You'll be very happy. <laughs> I think so too. You'll thank yourself when you actually need that backup, restoring photos from the cloud to your device it also helps when you get a new device, so it's very convenient that way. Oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Great. So. Well, thanks, Bob, for chatting with me today, and thanks, everyone, for tuning in. I hope you found this useful. Let us know what you use for backups in the comments and what you thought about this show. Subscribe, and we'll talk to you next time on The Three Techs. Yeah.